Craving ice, feeling tired all the time, can't walk up the steps without needing to catch your breath? Let's talk about iron deficiency anemia. I recently spoke with a client who's been receiving iron IV injections, but she wanted to stop getting the infusions because she didn't want her body to get used to them. I know firsthand the hesitation we have when it comes to medical procedures, drugs, IVs, because we hear so often about deleterious drug side effects, I think many people are skeptical of like everything the doctor prescribes. Trust issues with the medical industry aside, when your provider prescribes iron pills or infusions and you're hesitant, this is a great time to ask more questions so that you understand how this may hurt or help you. Give yourself permission to slow your doctor down. Ask your questions and not leave until you understand. So it was clear from the conversation I had with my client that she just didn't understand how the injections were supporting her. So let's break it down and keep watching because I'll also share herbs that can be supportive for iron deficiency anemia. Let's start from the beginning. Iron is absorbed by the body through food. We don't make it. When you have enough, your body does store some of it, but keep in mind that iron is not made. It's an element that must be introduced to the body. We typically do that in our diets. Why do you need it? We need iron to make hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the most abundant and important component of your red blood cells. Oxygen binds the hemoglobin inside of the red blood cells, and then that oxygen is carried to all of the tissues in your body. Through circulation and the process of gas exchange, the red blood cells are dropping off oxygen and picking up carbon dioxide. Now let's say you don't have enough iron. Your body stores some in ferritin. Ferritin is a protein that stores iron, so your body will use that reserve first. At this stage, you may not feel any symptoms of iron deficiency, but let's say this iron shortage progresses. You know, common reasons for iron deficiency anemia include blood loss, which can happen suddenly or slowly over time. Heavy menstrual bleeding is a really common reason. Another cause could be that there's iron malabsorption. So you're eating iron-rich foods, but it's not being absorbed and therefore not being used. And a third cause is that you're not getting enough iron in your diet. So in these instances, the body doesn't have enough iron to make hemoglobin, which again, binds to oxygen. So as this iron shortage progresses and we aren't keeping up with the body's iron needs, ferritin levels start to decline. Ferritin is like the reserve fuel in your gas tank. You're on E, but you've got just enough to make it to the gas station. You still may not experience symptoms as your ferritin levels decline, but now your body is trying to compensate by increasing red blood cell production. Even though there are declining amounts of iron, it's making red blood cells that don't have enough hemoglobin inside of them. As this pattern progresses, your hemoglobin concentration declines. This will be seen on your annual lab work, and this is likely when you start experiencing symptoms, which can include fatigue, irritability, feeling weak and tired, looking pale, hair breakage, headaches, chest pain, trouble breathing, and maybe even cravings for things like ice, clay, wallpaper. When I've been anemic, I always crave ice. So your blood work is showing signs of iron deficiency and anemia, and you're feeling the symptoms. BTW, if you sign up for our Interpreting Your Labs class, you can learn how to interpret your own blood work, see how you're trending, so you can catch that lowering hemoglobin before you're out of range. Now, other things can happen, but in this case of like a straightforward iron deficiency anemia, the iron infusions of the pills are helpful for not only helping your body's immediate need for iron, but also rebuilding the ferritin, the reserve. So in this instance, my client is experiencing anemia because of fibroids, which are causing heavy menstrual bleeding. Because of the profuse blood loss, the body can't keep up with the demand. It's a vicious cycle, you know, where the infusions are needed regularly because of the blood loss. So in addition to reducing the fibroids, she needs to reduce the menstrual bleeding and get more iron. Interesting, for the fibroid pain she's also experiencing, her doctor said take Motrin. So this leads to another really important note about anemia and NSAIDs. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Some over-the-counter ones are Aleve, Advil, Motrin, Bayer, Ibuprofen. There are prescription ones as well. NSAIDs irritate and damage the mucous membranes of the GI tract. This can inhibit the absorption of iron from your diet and other nutrients necessary for red blood cell production. 
Additionally, depending on like the level of the tissue damage, there could be blood loss, more blood loss in the intestines. This blood loss could be so low that it's not detectable in your stool. Regular acute blood loss, whether from your periods or intestinal lesions, is another way that iron deficiency anemia can develop or worsen because your body is losing red blood cells faster than it can produce more. Also, anemia can worsen or be induced by chronic inflammatory conditions because inflammation disrupts the release of iron from macrophages. That's a type of white blood cell back into the circulation. So here's what can help. Stop taking NSAIDs for cramps. You know, herbal alternatives include cramp bark, lobelia. Careful with that one, low dose, because it does relax smooth muscle tissue, which is great for the uterus, but lobelia can make you feel nauseous because the lower third of your esophagus is also made of smooth muscle. Black cohosh, blue vervain, and motherwort are also helpful. Links to some of the herbs are in our caption. Herbs that can check heavy menstrual bleeding include yarrow, hawthorn, rose, cinnamon, and shepherd's purse. Fresh shepherd's purse tincture is best, but I've also seen a lot of success with dried shepherd's purse. I recently made this blend, and it included two tablespoons of dried rose petals, not store-bought, wild roses, one tablespoon of dry shepherd's purse, one teaspoon of powdered cinnamon, steep, covered in 16 ounces of fresh boiled hot water, don't use the microwave, for at least an hour, then strain and a drink. You can drink this for a couple of days before you bleed and while you're bleeding to reduce the flow. Be consistent, and I would probably drink like red raspberry leaf or ladies mantle in between cycles to tone and re-strengthen the uterus. Links to herbs are in the caption. I would also consider taking liver tropha restoratives and kidney tonics because chronic use of NSAIDs and other drugs, it damages these organs. Milk thistle for the liver, stinging nettle seed for the kidneys. Milk thistle is also hugely supportive for PMS. Links to herbs in the caption. And plants with mucilage will aid in mucosal tissue repair along the GI tract. So slippery elm, plantain, cinnamon, flaxseed, those can be really supportive as well. You know where the links are. Iron-rich foods and herbs like stinging nettle leaf, molasses, beans, moringa, spinach, alfalfa, yellow dock. You know, we also make our robust blood syrup a high iron blend that you can check out on our website at iwillaremedy.com. And if you're vegetarian or vegan and persistently struggling with low iron, consider if that's the best diet for you. And depending on the severity of your anemia, like we've been talking about, Iron from food sources might not be enough to sufficiently increase and sustain your levels. You may need supplements. Novaferum and Floridex from Amazon can be helpful. Links in the caption. And always request annual blood work and learn to understand it yourself so you can keep track of your own progress. Check out our Interpreting Your Labs class. It's a virtual class. You have forever access. It includes a workbook. You can really dive into your own lab work. We'll put that link in the caption too. If you experience iron deficiency anemia, I hope this helped explain like what's happening, give you some context on why you're being prescribed supplementation and provided some useful tips and of course, herbal medicine. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified next time we release a video. Later.